Hi everybody, this is Courtney with Fiber Fox Studios and today we're going to learn these gorgeous continuous join motifs. This is done in the join as you go method. So once you finish your project, what you have is what you will have and you will be completely finished. That's the good part because we're going to deal with all of our tails as we go and I'm going to teach you this easy two row repeat design to create absolutely anything you want. You can do tops and shawls and even drapery, blankets, anything you want. If you want just something like an accent blanket at the end of your bed, this would be really pretty. It would just be more of an accent rather than warmth, but that's okay. So we're going to jump into doing this. I have made a shawl and that's what you saw in the pictures at the beginning of the video. This has been worked in the color Way Polo, which is part of the Red Heart Unforgettable series of yarn. And I have also been working an additional sample, which is in the really, really pretty colorway of Japanese Fall. And this is the Hobby Yarn. It's the Dream Color, 100% wool. It's really gorgeous size one yarn. So that's the big difference here is this is size one. This in the back is a size four. You really, truly can use absolutely any yarn that you want. I my personal preference is the color changing yarn, but it's up to you. You do not have to use color changing. This will also look very pretty in a solid, but so you can see that difference of that motif. Same motif, two really distinct looks because of the differences in the yarn and the size of the yarn. And that plays a huge factor. So you can use whatever you're comfortable with. We're gonna jump into the tutorial and I'm going to show you guys the two rows that you need to do, as well as how we're going to be joining these. So I have begun all of mine using the magic circle or magic loop. You can chain four or five, whatever you're comfortable with, um, and how big you want the center of the motif to end up. I left a little bit of an opening on all of mine, as you can see there. If you want that really tight, here in the center, do a chain four. If you want it um, a little bit looser, do a chain five. And if you want to follow along directly with me, you're gonna do the magic circle. So all I have is the tail over here in my left hand, and then I simply wrap it around these two fingers, crossing over. That's all I do. And then I just pick up, I go underneath the first strand and grab that second strand, pulling up a loop. I kind of give it a little twist as I come around and now I'm ready to begin working into the magic circle. So our row one is going to start with chaining five. So you're going to chain up five, one, two, three, four, and five. This counts as our first double crochet chain two space. We're now going to place seven double crochets separated by a chain two, each and every one of them into this magic circle. So we're going to begin by doing our first double crochet. There's one, chain two, one and two. Here's number two, chain two, third double crochet going into that loop. Chain two. This is the fourth. Chain two. Fifth. Chain two. Here is number six. Chain two and number seven. Now we need to chain two, one and two. And we're going to double check our count. So you want to go back and make sure that you're set up correctly. In the beginning, I said that this right here, the chain five counts as our first double crochet. Chain two, so we're going to count that one. Here's number two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we end up with a total of eight double crochets 
and chain two spaces. So we're now going to grab the loop and tighten down our magic circle. Now we need to do a slip stitch to the top of the chain three to join this round. We only have two rounds, so one, two, and three, going into the top of the chain three. And we just do a slip stitch to join. Now we're going to slip stitch here into the very next chain two space. So we just grab and pull up a loop. And now we're going to chain up four to count as our first treble or triple crochet. Some people call that. So there's three, four, chain four. Now we're going to wrap twice around our hook and we're going to come right back down here in that same chain two space. And we're going to place a total of three triple crochets. There's one, gonna wrap twice again, come into the same space, number two, and last but not least, wrap twice around the hook again, back into the same space. So that counts as a total of four triple crochets right here into this space. So now we need to form a corner. And to do our corner, we are going to chain 11 total. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and 11. Now we need to do four of our triple crochets into the next chain space. So making sure that your chain 11 is coming off on this side of your work, you're now going to wrap twice around your hook and go back here to this next chain two space, and we're going to place a total of four triple crochets. Here's number one. There's one. Now we're going to do number two. Wrap twice. Back into the same space for number three. Wrap twice. Back into the same space again for number four. And that just created one of our corners. So now we're going to create a side. By doing that, we need to chain three. To do that, I mean. So chain three. And now you're going to wrap twice around your hook and come back down into now the next chain two space. And we're going to place four of our triple crochets in there. One. Number two. twice, number three, wrap twice, go back in there, final time for number four. And now we need to create another corner. So we're going to chain 11 again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. Now we wrap twice around our hook. Make sure that our chain is coming off of this side. If we turn it, it'll look like that. So just make sure you're working on the correct side. Got our two, we've wrapped twice around the hook and we're gonna come into the next chain two space and we're gonna place four of our triple crochets or double. Number two, wrap twice. And final fourth time. Now we're going to create another side. So we're gonna chain three. One, two, and three. And we're gonna wrap twice around our hook. 
and come into the next chain two space and place four of our triple crochets. There's one. Number two. Number three. And last but not least, number four. And now we're going to need to create another corner. So we chain 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Now we wrap twice around our hook and we come down into the very next chain two space. And we complete four of our triple crochets. Just one. Two. Three. And now number four. And our last little run there, we've made our top corner and our bottom corner. Another bottom down here. Now we're going to do a side again. So for this side, we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. And then we wrap twice around our hook and go here into the very next chain two space. So we're working in that next chain two, placing our triple crochets. Total of four in that one as well. Here's number two. Wrap twice, back into that same exact space. Number three wrap twice back into the same exact space for number four now we're going to chain 11. this will be making another corner for us so we're going to get started and four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven now we're going to wrap twice around our hook and come into this final chain two space so right there you can see where we're at we're going right here into that one gonna hop into that one and do our four triple crochets which i seem to have already messed up my first one so let's wrap twice around the hook into that last chain two space and there's one Two, three, and four. And now to close off, we need to create our very last side. So this is what our work is looking like at this point. So we are going to chain three, one, two and three and then we're going to slip stitch to the top of the chain four that we did to start this round so we just do a simple little slip stitch now i want you to turn your work over from the back side of your work where you have the tail coming out from the uh, magic loop magic circle i like to do a slip stitch down a ways and go ahead and bind off with the knotted bind off so what i mean by that is i'm going to stay in the same color so on this color changing yarn you might like i have here in this case where this color is very different than this color that it's beside here when we close close out the round so all i'm going to do is do a slip stitch over here on the same color few in and go down just a little bit 
before I do a knotted bind off. So to do that, I just pick up here in the back of the work, pick up a loop, and then I slip stitch. Find the next loop, pick that up, and slip stitch. Now I'm over here where I can get down the stitch a little bit. So pick up a loop and slip stitch. Right here, next little space that I can go on that same color, slip stitch, and then I'm gonna chain up two and clip my yarn and bind off. I will do the same thing and slip stitch up a little bit onto this one of these stitches where the um, tail's coming out here, where we started the ring. I'm gonna bring it up here on one of these stitches and do a knotted bind off as well there. All of that I, I do before moving on, creating my next piece that we're going to start doing our continuous join with. We'll be joining directly on to the very first piece that we made. So I'm gonna show you guys that as well, but go ahead and, and deal with your tail real quick and then come back when you're ready to make motif number two, and I'll show you how to go about joining on. So when we're making this, it's really important that we know where our backside is because when we begin to do our join on each of these squares or motifs as we're joining them, we're going to need to know where the backside is because it's gonna be facing us as we join the next square on. And best thing I can tell you to do uh, if you don't want to clip, you can use your tails as your um, uh, marker, basically, that this is definitely the back side. But I like to use a stitch marker. So I just take any stitch marker that I have there on hand, and I'm going to slip that in to these stitches here on the back side so that I can always identify the back side super easily. I've been clipping my tails as I go. So I've not had the tails as an option for myself. So now we're going to begin our second motif here together. So we're going to move this over out of the way. And we're going to begin motif number two with our magic loop. So we'll just do our magic loop one more time. Pick up, go under. And then I will chain five to begin one two three four and five so that counts as my first double crochet chain two space so now we're going to be doing our seven double crochets each separated by a chain two back into our circle so i'm going to start here's number one counts as my second stitch because this right here is counting as our first double crochet so there's two now I'm going to chain two and go back down here into that circle again. It's my third stitch, chain two, double crochet again into the circle. This is my fourth, chain two, double crochet back here into the magic loop again. Chain two and double crochet into the magic loop yet again. Chain two and double crochet into the magic loop again. It's my seventh one. Chain two and last but not least, we need. Eighth stitch into the ring, chain two. Now I'm gonna grab that little tail and pull my ring closed. Easier said than done, I guess. So that pulls the ring on closed. I do like mine to be a little bit open. Now we're going to join to the top of the chain three. So one, two, and three. And we're just going to insert into the top of that stitch and then grab and pull through grab and pull through now we need to slip stitch into this next chain two space so we are going to slip stitch over there and now we start the round with the chain four 
So here's one, two, three, and four. Now we need to do three more triple crochets all into that same chain two space. So we're going to wrap twice, go back down into that same chain two space, and complete our triple crochets. There's one. Here's two. And here is number three. So now this time we're going to make our corner, but we are going to chain five and then we're going to be picking up a corner back here on our first motif. So we're going to chain five. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. And now we're going to pick up our first square. So you can pick up on any corner. You're just going to be grabbing in a corner and I want you to find the sixth stitch. So you're going to count up five from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five. And for me, this one right here is going to be my sixth stitch. So I'm going to insert into that stitch, making sure that my yarn stays over here to the right side of my needle or my hook, I mean. So I'm inserted there into that sixth stitch, and now I'm going to do a single crochet. So I'm gonna pull up a loop, I'm gonna grab and pull through two. And now I'm going to chain five, and see I'm working, I'm on the back side. The back side of my first square that I'm joining to is facing me, and I'm working this on the front side of my work. So now I need to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And we're gonna come down here to the piece that we're working on, the new motif that we're working on, and we're going to work our four triple crochets into that next chain two space. So we're gonna wrap twice around our hook, and we're gonna come right back down here and work our triple crochets. Get my yarn untangled real quick. There we go. So here's my first one. Number one. Number two. Wrap twice. Number three. And number four. Now we're going to make a side. So we'd be doing a chain three is what we did on our first one. But this time we're going to chain one. And we're going to come back down here to the one that we're joining to. And we're going to go into the chain three is where we're going to do our join. So we're going to pick up. And grab that chain three, pull up a loop, and we're going to do a single crochet. Now we're going to chain one, and now we're going to wrap twice around our hook, and we're going to go back down here to our motif that we're creating, and we're going to go into the next chain two space and do our four triple crochets. So nothing's changed. We're just going back here and completing this portion of the motif. So here's number two, number three, and number four. So now we're going to create a corner. So we're gonna chain five this time because we're going to single crochet and join on to this corner of our original first motif that we created. So we're going to chain five, one, two, three, four, and five. And now we're gonna come back here. So as you can see, the wrong side is still facing me. We're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, and go into the sixth 
single crochet, or I'm sorry, chain, I mean. So go into that chain, sixth chain. That puts you right in the center. So you'll have five stitches on this side and five stitches on this side. So I'm just pulling up a loop and completing a single crochet. Now I chain five again. One, two, three, four, and five. And again, I'm going to come back down here and work on the motif that I'm creating, doing my four triple crochets right here into the next chain two space. Here's one. Two. Three. And number four. So now if we stop and take a look at our work, we're going to fold everything out so it's right side facing up. We have joined this side of the motif to the original motif. So now we're just going to work like normal the rest of the way around, joining over here at the beginning of this round. So from here, we don't have to worry about our first motif that we just joined to because we're just finishing out this side of the motif, not joining to anything. So let's do that together. So we're creating a side now, and we know that because we just did a corner. So we're going to chain three, one, two, and three. And then we are going to do our triple crochets right there in the next chain two space. So here's one. Back into that same space. Number two. Back into that same space. Number three. back into that same space with number four. We just created a side, so now we're gonna create a corner. So we're gonna chain 11, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and 11. And we're going to go right back down here and work into the very next chain two space, doing four triple crochets. There's one, there's number two, number three, and number four. Now we're going to create a side. So we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. And we're going to come back down here and do four of our triple crochets just like normal into the same chain two space, the very next one. So here's number three. And number four. Now we're going to create a corner. So we're going to chain 11, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And we're going to go down here into our last chain two space. Working into that, doing four triple crochets. There's one. Here's number two. Number three. And number four. Now to close this round, we need to create our last side. So we're going to chain three, one, two, and three. And then we're going to find the top of the chain four, and that is where we're going to slip stitch to join. 
And then for me, I'm going to be going to the back side of my work and I'm going to handle my tail by doing the slip stitch over method. I'm going to get off the edge of my project and then I'm going to do the knotted bind off. So I'm just going to slip stitch over just a few. It's not noticeable on the project. So I think it is perfectly fine to do um, this way to bind everything off. I prefer it. You can do whatever bind off you prefer, but I just find dealing with these tails makes it so much more enjoyable to make something like this if we just handle it all when we're doing each one. So now I'm just gonna chain up two and clip my yarn cinch that down i'll do the same i'll slip stitch up this tail and then i'll be ready to go on to the next motif i'm going to show one more motif showing you how to join on to a project that is already a little more progress on it because you're actually going to end up needing to um, join two sides at at some point when you get your project built out like this one you join once when you're doing this side but then when you go to add another one on you're joining let me show you you'd be joining this right here just once just on this side but when you go to add another one you have to join on the two sides there's really no way around it for everything to line up and all you will be joining when you get, you know, something built out like this, you're going to be joining on this side and then on this side before moving on to your next motif. So I just want to show that so everybody's got all the different skills that you're going to need in order to do this shawl. So now we're going to join to um, existing work that's already built out some. So I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do here. So what I have here on my hook is the chain five. So I've done the first row for our motif and then I've started my second row. I have my chain five to begin my first corner ready to go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come back here. So you're going to have a piece laid out in front of you, wrong side facing you. And we're going to come over here on this top corner and pull it down some. We're going to come here and we're going to insert our hook into the top of um, this chain at the sixth chain. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Here's number six, and I'm gonna go into that chain right there. So now I'm gonna do my single crochet, and I'm gonna chain five to go back down to start working my second motif. Three, four, and five. So I'm gonna wrap twice around my hook. I'm going to pick up my work, making sure everything's facing me in the right direction. And I'm going to work here into the very next chain two space, doing the four triple crochets. So there's one, here's two, number three, And number four. Now I need to make my side. So I'm going to chain one because I'm joining. And I'm going to come back down here and look at my work. So I'm beginning to join. I've got to join in this direction. So I can actually turn my work if it's easier for this part. So turn it. I've got a chain one already on my hook. I'm coming over here to the chain three space that's on the side, and I'm going to do my single crochet. So if you stop and take a look at how your join's working out, this is the right side of the one I'm working on, and I've just joined to two parts of the side. So now from here, we're going to chain one, and we go back down to our motif and keep working. So I'm coming back down here to this motif 
and I'm going to do my three triple crochets in the next chain two space. So there's one. There's two. Three. And four. Now I'm going to need to do another corner. So I chain up five, one, two, three, four, and five. And now let's look at our work. Okay, let me set this down. So now I'm going to be joining here. So right now our join is working down this side. So I'm gonna come here into this corner to do the join. So I just pick that up. I like to put all of my single crochets I try to stay into the same loop. So there's already a loop there because we have this other that's already joined. So it's forming a little perfect spot. So we're gonna do our single crochet there. Now we're gonna chain five, one, two, three, four, and five, and come back down here to the motif that we're working. So we're gonna come and work more on our motif. So I'm gonna begin working in the very next chain two space, doing my four triple crochets. There's one, there's two, three, and four. Now I needed to build a side, so I'm gonna be doing a chain one, and I'm gonna come back down here to my work. So let's look at all of it. So now here is where I'm at with my join. So I'm joining this one to everything. So when I lay this down where I can see exactly what I've got going on, I've got my chain three space right here, and that's what I'm gonna join into. So I have done a chain one. Let's get this folded. I find it easier, easiest just to fold it over the work as we start joining on a bigger project. So I have it folded. I'm looking right side is facing me on the one I'm working. And I'm gonna go back here to the back, and I'm gonna go into that chain three space and I'm going to do my single crochet right there. Now I'm going to chain one and then I wrap and I come back down here to the motif I'm working and I do my four triple crochets. There's number two. Back into that same space. So now I'm going to be doing a corner because I've done my chain three essentially is the chain one single crochet chain one. So now I know I need to do a corner. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. And now I'm going to look at my work again. So once you get used to how you're joining, you won't need to, you know, fold it around as much. It'll become natural. But at this point, we have joined a long the side here, what's out of view of the camera. So we've joined here, we've joined here in the corner, we've joined here on the side. So now we need to do our next corner right over here. We're gonna be joining to this corner over here. So when that's all laid in place, you can see exactly why we do it this way. It works out perfect. So I pick up the next corner on my larger project that I'm building up and I'm going to come into the same loop, find whichever one we've been using, and we're gonna come in there, and that's where we're gonna be doing our single crochet. So go right in there, pull up a loop, and then finish out a single crochet. Now we're gonna chain five, one, two, three, four, and five, 
and we can fold this back now and start doing our last side. So that was our last join. From here, we just finish out the side of this particular motif. So I'm going into the next chain two space, doing my four triple crochets. There's number two, number three, and number four. Now I chain three, one, two, three, and I go into the next chain two space. One, two, three, and four. If I take a look at my work, I know that I need to make another corner now, so I chain up eleven, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Now I'm going to come into my last chain 2 space and work that with my four triple crochets. So there's one, there's two, three, and four. Now I've got to close this off and finish this last side. So I know I need to do a chain three. And then I go up here, find the top of the chain four, and that's where I'm going to slip stitch into. So I'm going to pull this up so we can take a look at what we've done. So now you have started another row. You know how to join on right here where we're beginning our next row. And now you also know how to join as you're building out a project, joining on two sides. For the rest of this row, that's all I'll have to do is join my next motif on two sides to the project. And, that, and then I grow it out as long as I want, as big as I want. I will have the number of motifs in the finished final shawl down below in the description if you want to make this exact one, it's pretty big. It's more of like a wrap. That's how I'm going to wear it is, you know, like a wrap. But it can be worn as a shawl, as a scarf. I mean, there's plenty you can do with it. Or you can just drape it and have it look beautiful at the end of a bed. Um, that would work as well. So hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'll have row start times down below in the description as well. So that you can jump back to any parts that you need if you... uh need a little bit more help or walk away from your project for a little bit and need help getting back started that will all be down there in the description for you guys so until next time bye for now and if you are not subscribed already please consider doing so that helps me grow this channel greatly and i do sincerely appreciate it